and gentlemen, welcome back, Ralph's Automotive. I've been asked by one of my regular customers about, uh, you know, making a video about cutting the keys, and uh, I don't have a key for my other machine, but we're going to uh, just use a standard key as an example for the day. I will go ahead and make another video if I get a security key that we are going to duplicate but what it amounts to I'm going to tell you guys what I know about it I'm going to give you my opinion and you can take that as such an opinion and uh, uh, without further ado let's get into that and we'll do a sample here too so uh, what I got and what a lot of people got Kind of get you focused in on that. Give you a shot. This is one of the one of the Chinese key cutting machines. Okay, so let me first start by saying this. While I do say that these machines, I guess. Well, I I don't know that you need to look at my ugly mug, but anyway, uh, I'm gonna just leave you uh, focused on that. But uh, anyway. What I'm gonna I'm gonna start out by saying this, okay? These machines here, they're cheap, okay? They are really, really, really cheap compared to a a quality. Um, I'm gonna try to be careful what I say now. Uh, uh, well, I'm just gonna leave it at that. A quality key cutting machine, okay? These things are cheap. They are very, very cheap, okay? So, but. That being said, as far as using these machines, you know, do they work? Yes, they do. They absolutely do. I have cut, if I think about this now, I'll, I'll have to think about it for just a minute. Since I've owned that uh, machine here, I've cut, I haven't had it that long, so I've cut probably... 25 30 keys different makes and models and I have in the past used the good machines as well of course I don't have one here in the shop because uh, quite frankly I, I will never cut that many keys to, to afford to buy uh, buy one of the uh, uh, better key cutters and, and yes I'm going to use that term better loosely because uh, you could you could argue there the, the point there for a while actually I'm gonna get you uh, <laughs> get you moved over here again so uh, anyway there is some things that I know about it sorry it's gonna be a little bit bit drawn out video but I want to tell you everything that I know about this so uh, let's go ahead and start I've already told you uh, in my opinion yes they, these machines work do they work great? No, they do not. Uh, if you think you're going to buy these cheap Chinese machines and you're going to go into the uh, locksmith business, uh, think again. Not happening. So, that being said, uh, first off, these blocks that clamp, I'm going to have to move the camera around now so you guys can follow along with what I'm saying. Okay, these are the blocks that clamp the key. There is two sides. Yes, they can be flipped. No, I will not flip them. There is so many setups that we can make uh, with those. And um, I can tell you, it depends on what you're cutting. They can work great, they can work not so great. For instance, this here, let me flip that camera around again. This is a GM key. Okay, Chevrolet, none, none other. <laughs> so, uh, that key here is, if you get the front profile, it's pretty skinny. So, you're trying to put it over here into the clamp 
take my word for it, it's, it, it would be hard for the camera to really pick that up. I'm going to go ahead and take the camera out of here and, and I will will try to show you. It, it is hard for the camera to pick this up, but when you look at the key versus, versus the face of the block, the key is crooked. So you you already going to start having to do some shimming or or whatever you know you have to use some dirty tricks to get that lined up straight because what you don't want to do is have a, a blank sitting in there crooked and then you try to cut and uh, what it does it it won't be square to the to the blade body and it ultimately it messes up the key you know it can make for a bad key trust me I know. Uh, you know, I know what I'm talking about. I've got enough of these things to, to know exactly exactly what I'm talking about, you know. So, for one, these blocks here. So, that being said, again, I, I'm going to emphasize on the part, yes, the machine works. I'm not telling you it doesn't work. We'll, we'll try that out here in a minute. So, anyway, let's get to the... Let's get to the setting up a key part. You know, for the most part, this is not always the case, but for the most part, we can come in here and flip those, uh, flip those two little, I'm going to call it a latch. What the latch does is, if you take a key, well, let me back up. I kind of went, got ahead of myself. Okay, so this right here, this little peg on that key cutting machine, is also adjustable. It moves the blade in or out, whichever whichever way, in or out. So, and of course, you got the cutting wheel on the other side. It is fixed. <clears throat> it's in a fixed position. So, the distance between the the edge of this this guide and the edge of the blade is a fixed is a fixed distance. We're not talking thousands, you know. I mean, they're fairly close, but but I mean, there there is some forgiveness in there, you know. But anyway, so there's adjustment on the on the guide. We're going to call it a guide. There is adjustment on the guide, and the reason there's adjustment when you're clamping in a key, like I'm going to use this for an example. If I hold it up at the camera, that is. Okay. This is a uh, 2018 Grand Caravan key. And uh, I've got a blank key here, a valet key. And what we want to do is duplicate this key with, of course, with the original. So we'll take the key. Get you in there. camera angle may not be the best but anyway we get it in here into the clamp and we want to hold it uh, um, uh, still not a good shot for it but there we go um, we want to hold it uh, up against the, the little latch and tighten down you know you don't have to crank on this this little handle right here you know no cranking required then what you need to check, get you a different angle here. Sorry about the camera, I'm not really good at the camera thing. So we want to make sure that this, this blade is actually horizontal with this body over here. You know, we need to be straight. Well, the same on the other side. Now this is the key, the actual key key, you know, that's already been cut. Uh, we want to get in in there and you want to note right away, you know, you want to see, okay, is this actually sitting the same way? You know, can we use it that way? Is it sitting correctly? Right? So make sure you're you're flat up against the block, the wall of the block, and make sure you, you're kind of even with each other so that it'll cut that key correctly. If you don't, it will not cut that key correctly. So, get you zoomed out a little bit more, makes it easier that way. 
so the next thing is now that you have that set get your little stops out of the way and before you start cutting I I would find I would go ahead and find I'm gonna get that camera back out of here out of its stand so I can show you this so right there we're touching on the guide and right here it seems like we're touching on the on the blade already well you, you want to be careful with that because that is what the adjustment here that's what it does now we want to turn that out a little bit so that blade does not touch and turn it inward and listen to it when that blade touches we need to back up a little bit and then you're good to cut so let's uh let me go ahead and set that up i can't set that up with uh holding the camera and all that good stuff i'm gonna put you guys back in here in in this tripod and uh hopefully get you set up in an angle where we can see yeah i don't think it's really gonna happen so i want to loose the thumb screw So we want to get out, so I now can see that I'm pushed out. So what you can do, I mean, to be honest, uh, what was I trying to say? To be honest, you know, uh, eyeball that thing is good enough. You just don't want to cut it. In, in this case here, I can take a piece of paper you know I can do that take a piece of paper and kind of run it on the edge here on the edge of the blade you know kind of run it up and down roll it back in and now I notice that I get drag on my paper moving it up and down I should have used a longer piece of paper dummy move but but the paper is starting to get drag on it and that paper depending on what kind of paper you got should be about two to three thousandths thick so you know you are away from it a good distance so we're going to just go ahead and dial in dial it to the minus side just a little bit more go ahead and lock it down and now basically we want to verify that from the guide to the blade we're in the same position because that's the distance we got to maintain that makes the difference whether it's going to cut in the right place or not again it's not rocket science but you want to kind of pay attention to that to make sure that that is going to work as if you mess that part of it up well guess what the key is not going to work now unfortunately on these ones here I don't have the vehicle here to prove to you that it will work but anyway you take my word for it they will work no problem at all so at this point in time we're actually ready to turn on the machine and make that cut so we'll get this off the we want to get it started on the guide and you don't want to hear that cutter cutting until it hit, hits the first uh, valley there if the if the valleys are pretty steep if you're going down a little a little bit it does not hurt to help the tool a little bit you know pull on it a little bit you know don't force that cutter through there give it time I'm going to go backwards now, which that's the way you should be going anyway, but I like to go toward the, the cutter first and then the other way it will cut perfectly fine. A lot of the experts will tell you, oh, that's not how you cut. I don't care. That's what I do. This is what works. Perfectly fine. So I'll follow the guide. And by the way, the reason for that is the tapered side is what makes it actually go. That's why I said I like to go the other way first. That's why I help the tool out a little bit. 
But as you heard from what I just did, if we bring it out, you can see here, that's really nice and smooth. And we can compare that to the original. There's really no need. Uh, I guarantee you it's the same. But anyway, go ahead and, and we're moving on with it here. Um, fold that latch back down. Same thing on the other side. Flip that key around. Make sure that key is sitting, sitting nice and straight. Do the same thing with the original. Make sure that key is sitting nice and straight. Make sure they're aligned properly. Kind of eyeball along the key. Make sure that it looks like it's sitting square. So we'll go the other way now. Well, this one is rubbing just a smidge, but that is not enough to hurt that key. Slow, you give it time to cut. Give the machine the time it needs to cut. And of course, I should have removed the little guides. I did not. But anyway, so we're pretty good there. I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to help this out a little bit. This is not rocket science by any means, and uh, again, we can lock her in. Turn our machine off. For the time being, you use the, the brush on the other side here. Dummy, not in the picture again. But there's a brush here. We'll use it. Actually, what you're supposed to do is you kind of take the key, kind of run that key along. You don't need to push on that really hard because these things here will grind. We already did this side, flip it, we'll do this side. We're going to make sure that it's nice and smooth, do not get no burr on it or anything like that. Of course, it's kind of hard for the camera to ever see this. I'm going to have to move the camera up to, to even be able to do this. And, and we'll try that, but I want to have a look at this. So if you have a look at this, I don't know if the camera will ever pick that up, but anyway... As you can see, that key is perfect. So, like I said in the beginning, these uh, uh, these machines, they do work. And I do have another one of these Defus for the, I uh, don't know if I pronounced that correctly. Defu is what I call them. But uh, anyway, guys, you know, it, it will cut a lot of different keys. Uh, if you're looking to, to make a, uh, you know, to use them as a, as a professional business, I, I don't recommend that at all. Uh, here's another another key blank that I got. I gotta cut it, uh, like tomorrow, next day, whatever. I gotta cut it. That's a that's older, uh, 2006 Ford something something. Uh, it's a key blank for it. I gotta cut it. Same difference, you know. Uh, this one here also happens to sit pretty good in in the machine, so uh, that part of it will work. But I'm telling you, uh, these machines here, the blocks, they don't hold every key like you think they should. So, and uh, for those of you that, that don't know how these automobiles work, I know a lot of you don't, don't have the, uh, any idea on how this works. So, the, the process of cutting a key, that is, that is great. That's all real great. But uh, without, uh, like these, uh, this one here, is actually a chip key so the problem with the with this is uh, if I cut you that key that key will get you in the door and a lot of people that I do keys for that's that's what they're after to be able to get in the door but uh, what it won't do it will not start the car until that thing is programmed and the only way to program it is if you have a tool that's uh, gonna get you into the vehicles it's called an immobilizer for the most part. You know, until you can get in there and program these, that key is uh, is not going to be suitable to, to, to use for, for driving. 
You can get in a door as an emergency, you know, you can make a key like that, hide it somewhere uh, on your frame or, or do something like that. You know, I recommend that uh, to my customers all the time. You can get unchipped keys for that, and I have found them, but some of these things here from China, uh, they're actually cheaper to buy them with a chip in it than what it is to, to get a good non-chipped uh, key. So either or, you know, this area here, we, we can't sell stuff like that. By God, we've got, you know, we got people here that rather dig a chip out of these damn things and tape it to the, the steering column and use a toggle switch to start the, the vehicle than, than they would spend $60 on a key. I can tell you that. That's just the area that I'm living in, you know. It may not be yours, but uh, you don't make a living on, on this stuff right here. I don't think so. If you're looking to do your own keys, you know, that will do house keys and all that good stuff. Uh, you know, these machines are great. They work. But just don't expect to get uh, to get uh, a, a professional quality every single time with these machines. It's not going to happen. I mean, that's, that right there, you know, that may have been a bad example. That was pretty, pretty slick right here. But that's not going to work like that every time. Like I said, these machines here just not, I mean, they're cheap. You know, they're cheap machines, they do they do what they're supposed to do, but at the end of the day, they're not like a high quality uh high quality key cutter, you know, or or not to not to mention the the automatic key cutters, you know, that basically cut a key only needing a coat. So but anyway, I'm not gonna get into all that. I just wanted to make that video as per a customer's request. To make a video so I did that we can actually do that one more time I've got kind of get you zoomed out a little bit I guess and maybe follow along we'll do it from this side right here see if I got a good shot of the machine I think I got you in there pretty good because I've got Two key, key fobs. So I got uh, these here key fobs. This is going to be, and this one is not a customer, that's my wife. She wanted the uh, blue key fob, so we got her the blue key fobs. Again, take your new key. It needs to go on the cutting side. Make sure that you even square with the body. Take an original. Fold it in there. Make sure they sit the same way. You know, a lot of time, well, these keys are actually duplicates. I don't, what I mean by that, the grooves are actually the same on both sides. Now, I don't know, uh, right off the top of my head, I don't know if they're always that way or if some of them may vary. I don't care. I always cut these keys. I flip the original. I don't care if it would work or not. I don't know if it would work. I flip the keys. So that being said, we'll turn the machine on. Same thing. We want to make sure that it doesn't cut heavy. And on this particular key here, actually it is cutting a little bit. So like I said earlier, by feel, I'm just going to go ahead and go out a little bit. No longer touching. Right there feels good. It's touching a little bit. So now we're going to go backwards.
And for those of you that are wondering why in the world are you going backwards? Well, the reason I go backwards, it eliminates the, the big burrs on the keys. That's the reason I go backwards first. You know, if they got the massive grooves, of course, you've got to be careful because there's no no way that cutter can cut on the back side, okay? If you got these smaller grooves, that'll work perfectly fine. If not, you have to work it, work a little bit with it. When you're doing that, the only reason I do that is the chips are not going, oh, I mean, the burr is not going to be as bad on the key as it will be when you're going the other way. Don't know if that makes sense to you. I don't care. Like I said, I cut keys all the time, and I do them that way, and they, they hardly ever got burrs on them. I like it. I don't have to grind on them, you know, like a crazy person. If you look at the grooves in the key and kind of look at the block itself, you know, make sure that all all stays in a, in a good alignment. Again, careful, make sure that it doesn't cut. Help it along. All right, now we're going to go the other way, the way it's supposed to go in the first place. And that basically deburs our, or takes most of the burrs off of it anyway. So here we go. There you have it. There's another set, and, and of course you can't feel it, but I have hardly any burrs on here. I don't need to hit this thing very lightly with the brush, it's, it's fine. You know, there's, there's nothing, I mean, nothing, nothing. You can take the word for it, otherwise my hands be cut open. So, anyway guys, that's how you uh, use the Defu, or whatever the heck that thing is called. And uh, here coming up, I'm going to go ahead and make the video for... Uh, Whoa, wrong way. For doing the programming on the two fobs. That'll be coming up uh, hopefully sometime this week. And maybe, uh, nah, I won't do another video on it. I just wanted to show this one here. Like I said, it was a request that I make the video. Went ahead and, and did what I said I was going to do. So, peace out.